Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to join the webinar, Digital Architectonics, a Symbiosis of Bricks and Bytes, the fourth edition of Connected series, which focuses on the best Sino-Swiss collaboration projects and research efforts. My name is Li Bing, and I'm the head of academic relations at SwissNext China, Science Consulate of Switzerland in China. We connect the dots between Switzerland and China in education, okay, research, so and innovation. This, and now it says me, I'm Today's good. webinar is organized That's in collaboration good. with Southeast University and ETH Zurich. And we are very privileged to have Chinese and Swiss experts from these two prestigious institutions to showcase their academic and research collaborations in digital architectonics over the decades. Now I'd like to explain one feature of this webinar. At the bottom of the Zoom interface, you can find the Q&A function. So please feel free to type in your questions during the webinar and we will answer them in the Q&A session. Without further ado, I'm glad to introduce our moderator, Professor Dr. Peng Tang, Deputy Director, Institute of Architectural Algorithms and Applications, School of Architecture from Southeast University. She's serving as the executive editor for the Frontier of Architectural Research Executive Director for the Computational Design Committee of the Architectural Society of China, and a member of National Key Laboratory of Urban and Architectural Heritage. Professor Dr. Tang, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Li Bing. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, today is also the first day of our advanced lecture series, Architecture Technology, uh, which organized by Southeast University and Swiss Next. Our title is the Digital Architectonics, the role of architecture in times of big data and artificial intelligence. So in the following days, we will have six lectures which made by the professors from ETH, TU Vienna and SEU. And so today is the opening of our lecture series uh, which made which will made by Professor Ludger Hallstatt and Professor Li Biao. So let uh, firstly let me introduce Professor Dr. Ludger Hallstatt. Ludger Hallstatt is a professor of architecture and the CAAD at the Institute for Technology in Architecture, Eddie Zurich. And um, between 1997 and 2000. Ludger Hallstatt was a visiting professor in the department of CAAD at the University of Kassel-Lenten, Germany. In 2000, he was appointed full professor at the Department of Architecture at ETH. And we're glad to know that since 2018, he's a guest professor at the Architectural Internationalization Demonstration of School of Architecture in Southeast University. So now we have many collaboration with Professor Ludger Harvestad Group. Today, the title of his speech will be Artificial Intelligence as a Culture Mirror. So welcome Professor Harvestad to give us the first speech. Of course. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, to share my screen, uh, you have to switch off your screen sharing in Shanghai. Okay, welcome everybody. I can't share my screen if, uh, okay, now I have option. <clears throat> Okay, welcome everybody. I want to give you a short introduction of uh, our uh, uh, background of the uh, collaboration and what I think the programmatics of it is in my uh, point of view. So um, look at this. I'm, I made PhD around uh, uh, this point on machine intelligence and in architecture. And uh, we have uh, this curve in, uh, uh, in this is the prominency of this, this concept uh, over the years. 
So when you see it came up, it was a, my PhD was a kind of peak, and now it's getting prominent again. So if you put that to architecture, for example, say smart building, then you see it's a kind of mirroring. The absolute values are, uh, of course, uh, uh, different. But if you, and that's the interesting thing, to go to smart uh, city, then you are here. So it's a super prominent uh, concept and it's getting radical uh, important in the last uh, uh, 10 years maximum. And the key point is not machine intelligence, but big data, if you see that. So I will discuss what this means uh, for architecture and for the kind of research we are doing because uh, this is very challenging. So let me show <clears throat> so this is what you expect from, from a chair in computing and architecture. So we, uh, <clears throat> uh, we had, uh, um, Peng, uh, 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 told that we, I'm, I started in 2000 at ETH. We have uh, three different phases. The first, I would say is empirical phase, uh, the first seven years. Uh, this is was uh, we tried to scan what's going on in computing and we try to apply it uh, to to architecture architectural practice this was then founding of several companies and we uh, had a book with that as you see it here in the background so all our projects of research are summarized there and there is a Chinese uh, version of that. The second phase is that we said, as a kind of saturation, we understood how this works, artificial intelligence and uh, big data in, in architecture. They made a step back and tried to reason about what's it's going on. So this is from uh, uh, 2008, 10 to uh, 2018. So, and we wrote a lot of uh, its reflection and theory. We wrote a, a couple of books. You can look them up. And currently we are in a phase that we say, we understand the technology, we understand the architectural theory, the principal mathematics, and now we want to reestablish a new kind of uh, architectural thinking. So, and I will talk about that uh, uh, soon. So a prominent, so this is our research to get a picture of it. I can't explain it in this short time. <clears throat> so these are the concepts, architectonics of language. You see it's always the biggest with big data. So we are not afraid of, of any application in any field. So this is disaster response, machine intelligence. mediating uh, uh, theory, urban, infrastructural ground. This is on language and books. This is on machine learning on, uh, on the generation of floor plans. You see it just on text. This is on uh, on uh, on neural uh, control of uh, architectural artifacts. So, and you see these these are the things. So, it's a lot of them. These are our actual research. So, these are the books. Just to give an idea, it's not. Too bad. We have a lot of lectures online. All our classes are online for three, four years now, all the lectures, tutorials and so on. We're push, pushing all education and research online to the cloud. 
And there will be an, an atlas on digital architecture coming uh, next month, a very big uh, encyclopedia of what is going on in, uh, in architecture and the digital uh, soon. So having all these experience, this is very uncomfortable to hear. And this is what big data and this peak of big data means and is a challenge for. So machine can design buildings, optimize towards users' interest. So machines can do these things automatically to please the customers. So these machines getting better, the more they knew about the, uh, uh, about the users. So this is what we experience and they can do automatic design. So we succeeded in, in winning, a winning a prize in a competition in 2007, I think, uh, with AI making an architectural design. We, want, uh, we won a prize for that, not the first one, but so it, it was clear that this, or it is clear that uh, machines can do that. And they get better the more they know about the users and the users get pleased by that. And that's the problem, that's not the solution. This algorithm to do that is short, it's generic, and it works worldwide. And it's always the same. Whatever you're doing, it's the same. Because of that, uh, uh, Google and uh, uh, Alibaba and, and so on, they, they all can work in, in all the domains because it's always the same. So it's very uncomfortable that uh, it's working like that. We can cover all cultures, all domains with the same very simple algorithm just by computing power. Yeah, and therefore the buildings are not generic that we think they're all the same if, we, if the machines are doing that. They're as individual as the user's data, which is available. So, and therefore people get very comfortable with this idea that the computer understands uh, them and is doing it automatically, which has nothing to do with what we call uh, architecture. So the key problem then is that it's so comfortable with these computers not to do anything. So this is what we're doing in the last two or three years. We try to understand this situation and we ask what is architecture then if we are, there's a coexistence with this uh, availability, uh, ubiquitous availability of AI. This is what we know. Information technique is a quantum technique. It's a single generic algorithm. And in mathematics, it's a projection from topology topo to topography, whatever it means. So this is very uh, simple uh, things. So in theory and the philosophy, we strongly believe that we are in, from Western perspective in a new renaissance. So we reflect the architecture from 18, uh, 1450 to 1650. They had the same principal challenge as we have. So it's very surprising. The mathematics is not contemporary 1990, 1990 2000, 2010. The mathematics of everything what is challenging us, it's very surprising as well, is from 1880 to 1920 when quantum physics started. That's the, uh, uh, the uh, thing. Therefore, we think that Information technique is a quantum technique, which developed in this time. To understand what's going on, we have to focus on this time. And since 1960, we have Moore's law and quantum printing of, uh, of energy and information, I would say that. And this is what we experience with these peaks. So it just works since 1960. Before that, these had been the principal concepts. And since 1960, there's no intellectual new idea. It just works in an incredible way. So for architecture, this means technology vanishes, objects just get a new face. So we don't sell, have a big construct. So everything gets super fine, fine granular. It, it's towards light. So it's, uh, it's just there. So everything gets very small and tiny. We will have uh, recycling, no ecological footprint because it's recycled and it's a quantum. We will have electric city instead of mechanical solutions. We will have logistic solutions, they have a logic, synthesis instead of simulations. The building will be lightweight, smart, adaptive, and fast. 
and there will be smart nodes in a global network of matter, energy, and information. So this is what we all hear all around. So we are pretty sure that this is, these are the, uh, the principal parameters. And the interesting thing is that, that these things have no structure and no form. So there's no architecture. We can't do anything. Therefore, what, we, what do we teach? So we want to make our students aware of this situation. And that is an open field of doing things. They have to understand how coding, the mathematics, uh, uh, computer techniques, the standards, and so on works. What is the principal theory? And because it's so, uh, so, so generic, the key, the key anchor point and with that, I'm, I'm uh, with my principal interest in the collaboration with my, my Chinese colleagues is our cultural heritage. There's nothing else but the cultural heritage because the technology is so powerful and so generic and so simple. Therefore, we have to understand who we are. And we only can do that by facing another culture and facing another language, talking with people of, uh, of another uh, background. So this, I would say, is, uh, is the, uh, the challenging and the interesting point. We have to know how to code. We have to know how these machines work or this machine works. And then we have to start talking in an interesting way, cross culture, cross time. So this is what we want to achieve and to foster. So I think this is my, my talk. We, uh, that's it, I think. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay. Thank you, Luca. And I think uh, maybe our students and the audience will and send some questions to you. So next, I will introduce uh, another guest, Pro Pro Professor Li Biao. Professor Li Biao is uh, our professor in the School of Architecture, Southeast University, and the director of Institute of Architectural Algorithm and Applications, what we call the INST AAA. He obtained an advanced master degree from Etiha Zurich and a doctor's degree from Southeast University. During 2009 to 2013, he engaged in postdoctoral research in Etiha Zurich. And his research focused on the theories and the methods related to digital technologies for architectural design. Today, uh, the title of his speech is My Exchange and a Collaboration with Etiha Zurich. So, um, Professor Livia, please start your speech. <clears throat> okay, uh, thank you, Tom Pong. Uh, <clears throat> I'll share, share my screen with a moment. Okay, <clears throat> thanks a lot uh, for the organization of uh, this uh, webinar. <clears throat> uh, thanks, uh, Swiss, uh, Swiss Next and uh, Professor Holstadt. <clears throat> uh, my topic is about uh, exchange and co collaboration with ETH Zurich and uh, uh, the title is very, how to say, <laughs> very simple. So, <clears throat> so before my lecture, I would uh, uh, recall my uh, uh, the short history of uh, my enter the digital field. <clears throat> uh, it was. Uh, it, it was uh, uh, 15 years ago. Uh, I was uh, fort uh, fortunate to participate uh, in academic exchange between SEU and uh, ETH. Uh, 
And uh, this uh, exchange program uh, last uh, nearly, I think nearly uh, uh, 30 years uh, exchange program. And uh, uh, that year when I went to ETH, it was uh, uh, 2004. And uh, I was uh, uh, 36 years old at, at, the, at that, that year. Um, <clears throat> the funny thing is, uh, uh, that year, I, 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 I uh, it, it was, uh, it, it was May 2004. Uh, the uh, Daegu airport uh, crashed at, at that, that, that year, and four people killed. It was May, uh, and I, uh, I went to, I transferred from Paris to Zurich. Uh, it was uh, September, the end of the September. <coughs> 2004, and uh, uh, that that was uh, my first time to went abroad. So uh, <coughs> I even keep uh, I even keep the, the boarding code, <coughs> boarding boarding card uh, here. Uh, <coughs> and uh, at that time, uh, Bruno Keller, uh, another professor in ETH, uh, uh, ETH uh, he was uh, in charge of exchange uh, uh, program. And he was a uh, building physics uh, professor. And uh, uh, <coughs> he uh, brought a group uh, of friends engaged in building physics and research on the, uh, research on the e-flow of uh, H HIA building, I, I, I think, in the e-flow of uh, ETH. Uh, <coughs> Sorry, wait a moment. Uh, since I had uh, uh, low working in, uh, no, uh, I I was uh, working in architectural design before I came to ETH, and uh, uh, there is uh, not much rational uh, thinking about architectural physics. So a uh, Bruno Keller, I, I think uh, he didn't uh, thought uh, that I can help him assess, or, or assist him to uh, his research. So uh, <coughs> he asked me, uh, here is a, a brief uh, talking with uh, Bruno Keller at that time. I still remember uh, very clear. It means uh, if you are, uh, architecture and you only can uh, design, uh, he, uh, he thought uh, it means you're low laughing. <coughs> uh, <coughs> it's, a, it's a funny talk. Uh, the, uh, the, the talking uh, indeed, uh, uh, how to say, the, the professor from, uh, from non-architecture design, uh, maybe he uh, he has any misunderstanding of uh, uh, architecture. Uh, but uh, indeed, uh, we can um, comprehend the lake lake of uh, tech, uh, technology uh, in architecture. Uh, and B, uh, Bruno Keller final uh, asked me to learn English well first, and then uh, considering the next step. Uh, I was uh, very regret uh, for my university study. First, I didn't learn English well. And uh, like the, uh, uh, the talent of learning the language. And second is uh, about uh, uh, computer programming. Uh, we had a course uh, named uh, Fortune 77 at that time. And I, I, I even didn't pass the, the course examination. <coughs> uh, and two, uh, uh, two months later, uh, two months later, uh, after being uh, introduced by intro introduced by uh, Bruce Keller. Uh, for my first time, I entered the crazy, uh, very cra uh, crazy term of uh, Ludka Hausstadt. Uh, 
and uh, uh, after that time, I uh, ex uh, experiments the the other side of uh, architects' uh, ration, uh, rational thinking, not only uh, emo emotional thinking of uh, architects. <coughs> uh, uh, here is a part of the research in uh, uh, CAD uh, group. Uh, I, I, I like this uh, slice very much. <coughs> uh, 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 this person, uh, 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 Marcos, uh, Marcos, Marcos is very funny and uh, uh, he uh, didn't uh, talk much, uh, but he was uh, doing theory of crazy program application, uh, such as uh, uh, <clears throat> the exploration of urban design and uh, uh, architecture design based on um, Voronoi and uh, genetic uh, uh, algorithms. And uh, this person, um, Kai, uh, he was uh, uh, my first teacher uh, teaching um, computer program. <coughs> uh, and uh, at that time, and he was uh, 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 he was teaching action script course. Uh, action script is uh, a computer programming based on Flash. <coughs> and uh, uh, Kai, uh, his English is uh, not so good. Uh, fortunately, uh, the program language is a, a universal uh, language in the world. Uh, and then I can uh, uh, seek uh, 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 relevant uh, reference material to serve the uh, program program <coughs> uh, program uh, problems. So it's uh, uh, okay to learn um, to, to 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 learn uh, action script. And uh, the, the top right uh, is a uh, Christoph Watman. Uh, Christoph uh, has uh, has a, a broad uh, knowledge uh, uh, background, and uh, uh, he studied the program program techniques uh, since uh, his uh, childhood. Uh, and at, at that time, he he's uh, also uh, good at uh, play piano and uh, very crazy guy. <laughs> And uh, Odilo Shaw, uh, he is uh, the middle person, uh, and then uh, he uh, took care of, of me, uh, my study for a long time, and uh, often uh, took me to uh, investigate uh, the custom of uh, Switzerland, and enjoy uh, Swiss food, and so on. <coughs> <coughs> and. Uh, uh, here is any in, in cases uh, uh, done by um, by the uh, the crazy uh, team at that time, and uh, <coughs> the top right is uh, use a uh, uh, genetic uh, algorithm to do the uh, bird nest uh, in Beijing. <coughs> it's a uh, it's a uh, uh, how to say use uh, use a uh, program. Um, for organize the uh, structure of the uh, uh, bird nest. <coughs> and uh, uh, <coughs> uh, and here is on the right is, uh, uh, I remember it was done by uh, Marcos. Uh, it's uh, about uh, how to say, use uh, uh, architecture, architecture function and a spatial uh, layout uh, served by a self organization self organization <coughs> and uh, uh, the in the middle middle uh, part is uh, uh, research the uh, relationship between architecture layout and uh, sunshine <coughs> And this case is, is very, uh, I think it's, uh, it's, it's very uh, powerful tools. And uh, after that time, I, uh, I thought I need to, to I, I need to do it. <coughs> uh, and 
uh, here is a small case, uh, uh, a small case done during my uh, postdoctoral research uh, in chair of CAD. Uh, I remember maybe it's uh, 2010 years. <coughs> Uh, it's about a Chinese uh, uh, regional house. Uh, they used a uh, self organization and uh, it's, it's a, a Huizhou, we call it Huizhou uh, residential, uh, residential house. Um, it's a rural based case of uh, uh, genetic, uh, gener uh, generative design. Uh, so we can, we can get uh, we can get uh, the result just within the um, several several minutes quickly <coughs> and uh, the program uh, the program uh, 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 also, uh, think about the courtyard space and uh, uh, proportions, proportion, uh, proportion and uh, spa spatial uh, char uh, characteristic and uh, architecture uh, style. <clears throat> or see, and uh, also uh, street uh, uh, characteristic. So we, we can find the. Uh, it's a, a perspective uh, uh, in the left and on the right is a, is a layout. So uh, with a, a stem uh, uh, traffic system. <coughs> okay, it's a, and uh, uh, during my uh, post uh, doctor research in, in uh, Lutka, uh, how is that chair? And uh, uh, any staffs uh, uh, of uh, of the chair, uh, uh, they were invited uh, to engage in te uh, teaching cooperation with uh, with my school. I, I mean, uh, Southeast University. <coughs> uh, and uh, uh, it, it, uh, this picture is a uh, 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 Watman and and. Uh, uh, it's uh, 2010. <clears throat> uh, I remember it's a, a two weeks uh, program or well, workshop. And the workshop is about uh, generative design and also uh, physical computing. <clears throat> Uh, and also uh, for uh, Christoph uh, Wattman, uh, it was uh, also uh, the first time he came to China. And uh, also uh, the first time uh, he used a uh, chopstick. <coughs> and uh, yeah. <coughs> And I think uh, my colleague uh, 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 Li Li, uh, we call it Double Li, uh, it, it was that time uh, Li Li uh, met uh, Christoph Wattman. <laughs> uh, Li Li was, uh, uh, was a master student in Southeast University. Uh, and he was a, a master of uh, Professor Han Dongqing at the, at, uh, during that time. Um, but in two years later, uh, Li Di went to ETH to continue uh, his uh, doctor research in chair of uh, how is that? <coughs> and uh, here is uh, uh, another uh, person, uh, Michael. Uh, and uh, uh, we had uh, several uh, teaching corporate uh, Cooperation, uh, <clears throat> and uh, 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 it's a picture. Uh, Michael talking in uh, Tid, <clears throat> and the person in, in in the movie on the top right, named uh, uh, Hua Now uh, he, Hua Hao is uh, my another uh, colleague. <clears throat> And uh, uh, Bahao uh, finished uh, his uh, 
um, doctor research also uh, followed uh, Professor Howistad. <coughs> And uh, Benny, uh, Benny came come to uh, my institute for several times uh, and had uh, lectures. <coughs> and uh, now, now Benny, uh, Benjamin, uh, uh, he is a, a pure uh, prof, a professor already uh, in ETH now. And at that time, he was a, a doctor. Uh, he was a PhD student in. Mm, professor, how is that <coughs> at that time? And uh, even till today, we still have uh, cooperation with uh, uh, ETH, with uh, CAD, uh, Wahid. Uh, here's uh, Wahid uh, uh, had uh, corporate teaching last year. <coughs> it's a pity uh, uh, this year uh, he uh, cannot come. <coughs> And uh, we had a co a corporate teaching um, about uh, deep learning and uh, and uh, big data, how to uh, use a technique uh, for architectural design. <coughs> uh, and then uh, here is a, I would have a, a brief uh, introduction of uh, my uh, institute of AAA. And uh, uh, my, uh, my institute is uh, not so big. Um, he, he's uh, adding and key persons, uh, key staffs uh, of my institute. And uh, was the phone on the top right, uh, the, uh, the guy. Now he's, uh, uh, he, he's uh, having a PhD in chair for uh, how is that <coughs> and uh, and uh, let's back to uh, to to uh, architecture <coughs> so um, <coughs> okay so the architecture uh, uh, as we know um, Architecture is a, a, a discipline about a function and a, a context or a, and form and space and also the structure uh, and the construction. Mm. <coughs> uh, here we can see uh, 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 the, the two uh, parts. One part is about, uh, about thinking and design. And uh, another part is about uh, description and drawing. And this uh, description and drawing is about uh, planning and section and layout or uh, physical models or even uh, a movie or even uh, per, uh, perspective. So it's, uh, we can, we can uh, divide the uh, architecture into such kind of two parts. One is about thinking and design, another is about uh, description and drawing. <coughs> and uh, 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 let's look back uh, at the uh, many software. Let's look back at the, the many software here uh, that uh, dominated architecture for uh, many years. Um, <coughs> uh, we can see uh, most of the software uh, are but limited uh, to the dis uh, description and the drawing of uh, buildings. <coughs> uh, but uh, let's back to the, uh, the uh, uh, this uh, slides. But architecture uh, uh, architecture uh, leads more uh, tools uh, to uh, dominate uh, um, how to say uh, uh, architecture design methods, uh, and they. Uh, maybe uh, um, uh, based on the uh, rule, uh, rule based, case based, or database, whatever. Ah. And uh, uh, this kind of, uh, uh, how to say, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the left side uh, about the thinking and design, it, it, it needs more uh, information. Uh, but uh, uh, the software we, we are using now uh, for many years is 
most of the software is about uh, description and drawing. So it's uh, uh, we, we, we have a, a gap between the uh, design and uh, drawing. <coughs> so, uh, so that's why uh, 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 it's the last uh, slice uh, of my uh, lecture. So uh, we are uh, trying uh, to create a tool uh, that need to integrate uh, rational uh, facts with uh, um, emotional thinking <coughs> and uh, uh, and treat uh, um, computer as a um, the uh, agri uh, algorithm uh, machine. Uh, <coughs> So the machine, uh, th uh, this uh, special machine of uh, computer, uh, they have a uh, parallel uh, to a human brain. <coughs> so they have, uh, it's a, it's a, uh, 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 and the result of the, uh, mm, the uh, program from the computer edit, how do they change the uh, drawing, a computer, uh, added uh, architecture drawing to um, computer added uh, architecture design. And normally uh, the CAD, the, uh, the, the concept of CAD is uh, uh, for design, but most of the software now is uh, just for drawing. <coughs> so um, uh, we need a, a tool. Uh, <coughs> we need a tool uh, uh, integrate um, the rational uh, element of design and uh, uh, emotional effects of the design uh, uh, to integrate uh, integrate uh, the, the, the two parts uh, together. <coughs> and uh, uh, we need uh, also a, a super function um, which can serve the uh, most of architecture uh, uh, thinkings or, uh, or uh, <clears throat> or, or, or methodology or new methodology. So we are uh, create, uh, creating such kind of uh, uh, crazy tools. Okay, that's uh, my lecture. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Professor Lee. And uh, we noticed that many uh, audience uh, send their questions to to us. So we now we plan to uh, shift to the Q and A section. Um, may I ask you? There are questions to you and uh, Professor Hofstad and Professor Libia. Please choose the the question that you interested to answer. So the first one. I, I, I will read it. Um, what do you consider to be the greatest contribution of digital architectonics to traditional architecture? Can you hear me, <laughs> Professor Arsta? What do you con uh, con consider to the contribution? I think it's... Um... Yeah, it's an interesting question. <laughs> Never had that. <laughs> I don't know. That's very new. So I would say um, with um, with all these big data, machine learning, and so on. If you don't um, take that serious in, in the vertical and uh, to, towards uh, kind of uh, ideology then uh, things will vanish. So it really will dissolve. So um, all these digital technologies will dissolve whatever there is to, to a generic uh, soup. So this is what uh, Colas, for example, says it's uh, junk space. And I would say with junk space with Colas, uh, you can't improve by doing better. So which is a strange uh, uh, paradox. So because there's too much design, there's too much of everything, too much effort, too much of these machines, too much ergonomy, too much empathy, and, and so on. And by that, everything's flooding away. Architectonics, I would say, is uh, just 
just a different, in my understanding, it's a different understanding uh, than design and optimizing things. It's just orthogonal to that. And this will preserve, so then uh, try to understand, make an archaeology to what is there, to preserve it and to put it to this uh, new digital world. So the biggest contribution is preservation of our cultural heritage. In strong contrast uh, to uh, uh, digital uh, design, in my understanding, which uh, makes it available everywhere, and by that, uh, all our cultural heritage will dissolve. I don't know whether this is the, the answer. It's a little complicated, <laughs> but this question was new. <laughs> this question is from the, the audience uh, that uh, may be not from the field of our architecture, but many other questions I think is from the, the students uh, uh, who is studying in the university or uh, will go into to the society to find their jobs. The next question is, uh, I, I think it's from a student that is now, nowadays more and more enterprises and are playing important roles in the promotion of technologies, uh, Google, Alibaba, et cetera. In architecture design, there are also some companies researching on tech, tech, technical in, innovations such as generative design, smart city, construction robot. In this situation, how should universities and the enterprises focus their own research field? Is there any difference between them? Um, uh, I, I think they, uh, it's uh, maybe a student. <laughs> they they want to know the yeah. in, in our me in, again. Or? Yeah, uh, uh, many many companies has uh, do much more research on on the. Yeah. the so this is, uh, for example, there was a reason why we shifted around 2007, 2010 from uh, pragmatic uh, research uh, towards basic research, because we somehow uh, uh, scanned all the different applications, we understood them, we founded companies in the different fields, so there are about 200 uh, employees, it's not too much, but it's, it's okay, especially for, for a country like Switzerland. Um, so, but uh, then we understood that uh, in principle, these things are clear and it's not a question of research anymore to push it. So this is what we experience now with big data, with smart cities and so on, that companies just doing automatic design on infrastructure and architecture. So universities has to do just something else. So, and this is what I think with these orthog orthogonal uh, orthogonality. So therefore we started writing this book, we tried to understand the theory, the mathematics and, and, and so on. And this I think is, and that's a very interesting thing is, this is symmetric in our Western culture to the, uh, to the Renaissance where uh, all these printing press and uh, Leonardo da Vinci, all these modern times uh, started and they had the same uh, situation. And this is the birth of architecture. Architecture is always dealing with and, and it's kind of domesticating and giving uh, a space to live with new kinds of technologies. And we are experiencing that in, uh, in, in Western perspective, as we experienced it with, uh, for example, in Renaissance. Therefore, we can learn from this uh, archaeology. Mm -hmm. And this, I think, is, uh, yeah, this is the, the, the very thing. This is what I said we need to learn at universities the literacy, and we have to re invent architecture on a digital level and we can learn from our cultural heritage and this will be different in europe from china for me it's 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 very interesting to compare that how how, how our cultures react on that because the platform and this is what company is doing it's all the same and it's super simple in principle they're surprisingly simple how this code works okay. yeah so uh, now we are, again, the Renaissance uh, uh, times to come to the architecture. Um, so uh, we, we still have uh, 10 minutes. Some students want to know something about study in Zurich, in Etihad Zurich, 
the NCAA results. The question is, may I ask what are the focus of the master's doctor and the postdoctoral training programs and research works in CAA, the Institute of Technology and Architecture doing. <laughs> so there, <laughs> I, I, I also want to know if there are any difference from uh, Professor Lee uh, study in, in Zurich uh, in, in Etiha. Uh, he, he studied 10 years ago. So are there any changes? Um, okay. In, yeah, uh, things change, of course, a lot. But in principle, it's like that, that uh, if you go and bachelor and master, you have a, in Zurich, have a very traditional architectural school. So mm -hmm. and you uh, focus very much, and because of that, ATH is uh, famous on the construction of buildings. So uh, Swiss people think that there's no design without construction, without being able to do it. So they don't like fancy stuff which fall apart. So this is the style and ETH is famous for that. And in this sense, it's very traditional at ETH and they don't like to change things. Of course, it's changing, but uh, <laughs> it's like that. So this is bachelor master. So and uh, then you have uh, studios with uh, the design studios every semester which, uh, with a certain professor and uh, students learn each semester are different, they learn how these professors design, how they think about architecture and so on, and they uh, experience it. So uh, on a PhD level, it's, uh, so we are starting to having, have schools, but uh, this is a, it's a minority of so maybe 10% of the PhDs are with, with certain uh, 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 programs and classes. The rest is just a contract with the professor. So this is a direct relation of a PhD student with the professor and the professor's uh, research interest. So either you have certain projects or certain fundings, and then you have a direct one-to-one -one, uh, uh, relation with the professor, and you have to negotiate, negotiate with the professor. This idea of a PhD school is is, is not there yet in, in, in Zurich, but I'm, I'm happy with that. So I really don't like this idea of PhD schools. So which are all around in the, in the Anglo-American system. So, but we, this is in our school at SL, we have grants and uh, students with our grants from our department, from our institutes, they have to join a kind of school and classes uh, and so on. But uh, I am fighting for a, a, a very individual, specific research interest, like we had with, uh, with uh, Li Biao, a very certain interest, and uh, developing that over three to five years, and then it's fine. And we don't have classes. Also, I don't like classes, and we have very few uh, at uh, ETH. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think you're we... free to apply. <laughs> So, and uh, so in principle, if you have a grant, if you have money, so there's no fee at ETH in de facto, it's, it's expensive to live in Zurich. Uh, if, you, uh, if you find a professor and you have some funding, you, you're there. Mm -hmm. So if you have a degree from a nice school like SEU, no problem, yeah? <laughs> no fee, <laughs> just <laughs> money and, and a topic, then you can do it. Yeah, and I think um, maybe uh, last question, but uh, another kind of questions that are maybe focused on the, the fabrication, I think. So uh, this audience asked, what's the main bottle, bottleneck uh, when incorporating uh, these technologies into architectural industry practice? Is it subject to technology itself? or actual manufacturer. Mm. Uh, it's uh, in, uh, it's, uh, you want to know the technology, how to uh, make the, the technologies into architecture industry practice, as buildings, construction. Yeah. And is it the subject to technology itself or actually the manufacturer? Mm -hmm. I think it's. Uh, I think the key driver, the driver, of course, if you're in, in media, you see all these fancy robots and so on, or these crazy materials and so on. But they are not the driver. 
So what uh, what we have with the driver is an uh, it's it's a not so fancy building information models. These are always these uh, nerdy guys that do the people are doing that. So nobody wants to be like that as an architect. But uh, but even that, it's an indicator. I think uh, uh, is with big data uh, with artificial intelligence. It's a problem of logistics. So on logistics, will change it. So on, with that. Uh, for example, I think the the uh, construction with robots or uh, uh, mass customization and so on. These are all aspects of of a radical change to, from building side towards uh, uh, super logistics like like Alibaba, Amazon, and whatever. So Google of how to fit things and put them on site. So mm -hmm. I, I think this will be uh, the, the the key uh, driver. So and uh, uh, therefore, I think it's it's very important to understand coding, to understand what big data is about, where the meaning is, and make sense out of it. So and therefore, I disbelieve that it's too important to, for example, to control machines doing that and so on. This is a very romantic idea of what what's going on. In principle, it's it's logistic with logistics, which is is, is changing the industry. Mm -hmm. This would be my statement. So it's invisible, which is a little complicated for architects. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Libby, do, do you think we we can uh, another questions? Shift to another questions? Yeah, we, we, we still have time for maybe one last question. Yeah. Okay. Um, so question. Uh, Okay, uh, this one. This one is uh, how will the increasing power of AI change the job of architects? Uh, maybe worry about our jobs. Do you foresee a further in which simpler buildings could be designed entirely by uh, algorithms? Maybe Professor Lee and uh, Professor Horst can also give us some. Uh, for the of this question. The simple buildings could be designed by algorithms. So the architects will lose their jobs. <laughs> you should answer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, when I had uh, lectures, uh, uh, they always have such kind of uh, uh, questions. Yeah. Many many students ask uh, about uh, maybe similar similar question. Is uh, whether AI can uh, reply uh, replace uh, architect architecture? Is a key is it the key person about it? Tom? Yes. Um, okay. But I think uh, for the for the uh, technique, uh, it can. Uh, so for many, um, how to say, uh, uh, many um, about uh, many things about uh, design uh, for the technique, but uh, it it has a very quickly uh, uh, calculate and can uh, store many many uh, big data, uh, and uh, I think. Uh, AI technique can um, instate uh, many part of, uh, of architecture, in many part of architecture, but uh, it means uh, architect can uh, save their time for, uh, for another important parts. For example, uh, uh, concentrate on uh, how to say, Ludga. Uh, concentrate on. <laughs> I, I really don't know <laughs> how to say. Uh, no, I would say it, it's a it's yeah. a clear yes. Huh? Machines can, uh, if we think in conventional ways, computers uh -huh. will uh, substitute uh, take over this part. Therefore, I yeah. think it's important to have this, this this research on a kind of reinvention what architecture is about. Mm -hmm. So to overcome these concepts of junk space and, and so on, where you can't improve by doing better, get, you have to deal with it. So, and yeah. 
therefore the, the complicated part is that everything if everything is solved and everybody is happy this cannot work so the complicated mm -hmm. part is to, to understand that this is not paradise so in our terms so and uh, yeah. it never worked that that there are no problems so but the problems of the, the, the promise of this technology is if you just follow the, the machines then everybody is happy, but this is nonsense. So it, and it never worked in, in any culture, any time. So something substantial is missing and we have to find that as architects. And this is, I think, a, a very a prominent and noble uh, uh, um, a question for architects. So no other discipline can, can, can do that like architects. But it's not running with with machines or against machines and so on. So it's it's mm -hmm. just another game. So therefore, you have to be literate. You have to know how it works and then do something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for to for your answers and lectures. And uh, there are still many uh, questions uh, come to to the board. But uh, we can leave uh, uh, leave our answers to, to them by uh, uh, through the, the uh, platform of SwissNet. So, uh, leaving uh, you can show the audience the the. Yes. Uh, so thank you. Thank you, Professor Dr. Tang, for your excellent moderation and also a great appreciation to Professor Dr. Hovestad and Professor Dr. Lee for your available time and your deep insights. So uh, we still have uh, some quite many questions unanswered. So we will transfer transmit these questions to our to our speakers and uh, and also get back to the audience. So also to uh, if you have more questions, then you can also send them to the email address uh, that we show on this slide. Um, then you are also more than welcome to scan a QR code to follow us on our social media platform. Uh, thank you very much for your active participation and we look forward to meeting you in our next events. Thank you very much again to our speakers and to uh, uh, the moderator. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I, I uh, uh, noticed to uh, the audience that we will have uh, uh, six lectures from the from tomorrow. Uh, we will show the, the code of the meeting to uh, to you uh, through the WeChat group. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. -bye.